Uh, Jeff Squire from the Berkshire Design Group here on behalf of uh, Todd Fleur and Sovereign Builders. Um, and then with us also virtually, because he couldn't be here tonight, is Charles Roberts uh, from Two Middle Architects, who's also been working on the project and will share um, some comments about the architectural component of the project. Um, this. No. <coughs> so, Jeff, sorry, we're not going to allow that, all right? So, so I, I okay. contacted him, he knows that he can't present. Ah, okay. We'll have to type his comments in the chat. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm not prepared to talk too much about the architecture, and we'll just have to figure but, this out. But in fairness, a bunch of the stormwater stuff sounds like it hasn't been... We'll okay. talk about that. Okay. Um, so this project is on APU Avenue, um, just to make everybody familiar. Um, it really comprises uh, two parcels, uh, 25C12 and 25C17. Um, there's some other land that's associated with you know, the project, but some of it is being sold off through an A&R and has been developed through different means. So what we're looking at generally is, is what you see highlighted here, which is uh, about five and a quarter acres um, with a private drive that extends off of uh, North, North Street. Um, and then it does extend up to a small finger on the north end of the parcel on Northern Ave, the western end of Northern Ave. Um, and then the western edge of the property abuts the, uh, the rail trail, uh, the bike path, and then uh, private property on the sort of the southwest and uh, <coughs> southern edges. Um, as you all may know, this is a project or property that, um, at least from Berkshire's standpoint, we've looked at um, for a number of developers. Um, we've done um, a number of schemes on this. Um, this property is unique in that it's you know nestled in um, in the URB zoning district close to downtown with access to a lot of the um, 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 you know major thoroughfares, um, vehicle and, and pedestrian, bike and otherwise. Um, there's a substantial amount of wetlands on the property. The rear western portion of the property um, is, is primarily bordering vegetated wetland. Um, there's also, um, you can see sort of highlighted in this heavy blue line, uh, a 200 foot riverfront area associated with um, stream that uh, comes through from the west side and is culverted underneath the bike path and then um, continues to spill out into this, into this larger wetland. So really the area that we're you know, looking at is this eastern portion of the site. Um, it's maybe a third of the overall land area, maybe a little bit more. Um, it currently contains a single family home um, of about 1,500 square feet. There's a small shed uh, in the backyard and it's primarily um, just mown, mown lawn that slopes down to um, a number of mature tree plantings, stone wall remnants um, along the edge of the, uh, edge of the wetland. Um, we are seeking a special permit approval for 12 uh, new single-family efficiency units um, under Section 350 10 and 350 11. Um, it also includes this private drive um, that is View Ave. Um, this is for um, 12, uh, 12 new uh, efficiency units, which I'll describe in a little bit more detail um, in a moment, but this is just some uh, images of the existing site uh, so this is looking down View Ave. This is the single family home that exists on the site now. Um, this is the back of the building um, to the right, uh, upper right here in the shed you can see in the background. Um, and then looking around the site through sort of the forested woodlands and wetlands in the back, um, the mown lawn you can see uh, up to the, um, there's a number of uh, large mature Norway, mate, uh, Norway spruces on the site. Um, and that's what you can see, that's what all these uh, evergreens that you can see in the, in the background are. Um, some views of the wetland area, and then um, there's an existing trail system on the northern edge of the property, um, which we'll talk about later. Um, as I noted, the proposal is for 12 new efficiency units on the eastern portion of the site. Uh, it includes an improvement to, to what is view I have now, and then it branches off into two um, to dead end road essentially with a uh, small parking area um, which accommodates 15 cars. There's provision for emergency vehicle turnaround uh, in this space here. Um, but all these units um, back up against that, the, the wetland area, uh, respecting the 35 foot no disturbed limit in this, um, in this zoning district. 
Um, obviously, the majority of this site is either within a uh, hundred foot buffer zone or uh, riverfront, and um, you know, understandably, we can't avoid all impacts to to buffer zone, but we are respecting certainly the 35 no disturb and um, any disturbance within the riverfront area. So. Um, these are um, 12 new units. There's nine units. These small units are uh, 768 square feet. Um, there's nine of those, and then there's three of these larger units, which include a roughly 250 square foot uh, carport, which is really the additional square footage. Those are um, just over 1,300 square feet. Um, these are all electric. Um, they will be, um, they've got uh, and been designed with the appropriate HERS rating um, based on you know, zoning requirements for these, this style of unit, uh, type of unit. Um, as I noted, we've got, uh, we've got 15 parking spaces. There are three additional spaces within these carports, conceivably. Um, so there's parking for 18 total, conceivably with compact cars, you could fit another space in these, in these driveways. Uh, for the larger units, but um, we're, we've, we've said that there's parking for 18 legitimately. There are two um, covered bike storage sheds. Um, there's one at this uh, intersection here, and then further back on the site in this location. Um, these are covered bike sheds that each uh, can accommodate easily. Um, three, uh, four bike racks, so eight, uh, eight, uh, eight, eight bikes total um, comfortably in each of these um, each of these structures um, taking you through some of the um, other details of the site stormwater and and drainage um, understandably is, is a is a pretty big concern out here given the high groundwater table and the proximity of wetlands um, we've maintained essentially the same surface area that is draining um, to the east off of View Ave, the <coughs> remainder of the site from roughly this high point here. Um, we branch off into two different drainage areas, one for this, this lower southern parking lot, which is collected through a series of treatment chambers and infiltration um, galleys, and then to the north. Similarly, um, we are um, draining to uh, a catch base in the stormwater collection system here, which is a much larger system due to a little bit higher um, elevation <coughs> and depth of groundwater. So we have the ability to uh, provide uh, some additional underground storage in this location. Um, the roof water is all being picked up via a series of um, subsurface pipes that all tie to these same systems. Um, we are also including um, a series of sub drains just in, in recognition of the need to uh, ensure that, that you know, ground flows and stormwater continues to do um, closely what it's doing now through the site, uh, presuming it's, it's moving east to west. So there's a series of sub drains uh, around the pavement structure, uh, both on the outside eastern edge and then along the inside uh, sidewalk <coughs> edge um, to help direct um, any ground flows that may be moving through um, and get them through the site so you know we don't create a, uh, an impingement to, to that um, process. Um, there's a small outdoor community space as required by zoning. Um, this is really um, you know a glorified fire pit area. It's, it's intended to be um, you know very low impact. It's, it's a small fire ring with some seating available around it, um, Adirondack chairs, that type of thing, um, with a gravel, uh, compacted gravel pad. Um, we're not anticipating that this is going to be this large pavilion, you know, um, concert structure. This is really just a place for the residents to, to gather and have a, um, you know, small, small, um, you know, outdoor activity or something during the, the nicer weather. Um, Utility-wise, uh, other utilities, water, we are, um, we've been in discussion with DPW. There's an existing four-inch line that extends up um, U Avenue now. Um, that was um, uh, connected to a new eight inch service that was stubbed out by the city of several years ago. So um, we are proposing to um, abandon essentially that, that four inch line, replace it with a new eight inch line to service the site. Um, all the existing services will be connected to that new, uh, new eight inch line per DPW request. And then that will continue into the site to service the new units. Um, there's various hydrants um, as, as needed and required for 
um, for flushing and uh, fire suppression needs. Uh, similarly, sanitary, um, there is an existing line in view Ave that goes to uh, a certain point. Um, we've agreed to, you know, video that, that line, ensure it is um, in good, uh, good condition, good working order. Um, essentially, these new units will connect via a gravity system to a, a single ejector pump, which will then connect, um, which will then, you know, via force main, connect to uh, a new structure that goes to that gravity service. Um, provided that's in decent condition. If it's not, um, you know, we, we've obviously got, got the ability to replace that or work with the DPW to do what's needed um, to accommodate that. But um, that's sanitary. Um, lighting, um, yeah, I think it's just in recognition of the location and the, you know, really the desire to um, not provide any more lighting than is really necessary to safely get people um, through the site. Um, and um, you know, get to their parking areas and to their to their front doors safely. Um, there's four uh, there's four single uh, site poles. This is uh, just an image that's similar to um, what we're proposing, but these are all um, compliant with city regulations, uh, both in terms of dark sky lighting, bug ratings, um, full cutoff. Uh, we did go through um, at least a revision or two to clarify um, some of the extents of, of that code of metrics, but um, overall it is, it is these you know, four single lights. There's one small bollard just at the uh, junction of the, this community you know, fire pit area. And then um, we also included uh, in this plan the photo metrics for um, uh, ceiling mounted, there'll be flush ceiling mounted lights uh, each of the entries and under the uh, bike shelters just for, you know, for general safety there, but those photometrics are also included here. Uh, but there's no other exterior lighting that was that's proposed on the buildings or uh, on the site. So um, really trying to minimize um, the amount of light, you know, in that in that part of the uh, neighborhood and, and just um, recognition that it is a dense neighborhood. Um, planting plan, um, obviously, as I mentioned before, there are a number of. Um, mature Norway spruce is on the site. Um, you know, we, there are a number that are still depicted here that are gonna be preserved, um, but there also are a number that, that will need to come out as a result of the project. Um, you know, we recognize that that's certainly not the ideal situation, but um, you know, I would offer that these are all, um, every single one of these is a Norway spruce. Um, all of them are 90, you know, 80 to 90 feet tall and sort of reaching the end of their lifespan. Um, and, um, you know, particularly with those, that tree species, as you start to remove vegetation or vegetation around these large, um, you know, groves die off, it just creates a, a much larger hazard for the trees that are remaining because uh, they are so big and that the wind throw during, you know, um, you know, heavy wind events has a tendency to, um, to wreak a lot of, uh, of havoc. So, um, you know, those within the limited work we are proposing to remove, um, those have been accounted for in, um, we did include a tree removal uh, plan that notes, the, um, that notes the tree replacement required, um, what we're able to provide, um, and then obviously the mitigation that's necessary to, to compensate for the difference. But you know, what is being planted are um, you know, a number of uh, you know, tree species, including white oaks. Um, we've, got, um, we've got plane trees. Um, I think there's ironwood. We've got a, um, obviously some shadbush and a lankier, um, dogwood. So there's a number of other species that we're trying to add to the um, to the mix of, of species out there to diversify that that woodland area, uh, and obviously a number of uh, shrub species as well, just to um, sort of finish out that that landscape. Offer buffers, um, you know, where where they're needed um, up against property lines and against property boundaries. Um, there are, there were four uh, mature spruces here that um, were recently added to be removed just again because of negotiations with budding landowners and concerns about the um, hazard of those. So in place, you know, we have added additional plantings. We do have some fencing, um, some screen fencing in locations where uh, vehicle headlights may present um, a concern. So those are certainly in areas, uh, particularly along this edge where um, headlights are, you know, may, might be a concern. 
this northerly parking lot um, is less so. This is quite a bit a distance from um, neighboring residences. And then similarly here, um, there are residents to the east, um, but we have um, you know, provided a number of, of, of plantings in there um, to, to, to provide some additional screening and buffer. Um, again, just the tree removal exhibit, what you see in red is what's being proposed for removal. These are all um, trees that would fall under the significant tree ordinance. Um, and I think all of these are, um, are Norway spruces, um, but they've been accounted for. And as I mentioned, um, the, mitig the required mitig mitigation is, is being offered up as, as part of this permit. Um, the project is highlight a couple of other things. Yeah. Um, I'm so sorry to interrupt, but I know that tree removal is something that is of concern to some of the abutters. So can you yeah. just uh, share with everybody the calculation of exactly what's being removed and how much is being replanted versus what's being paid Absolutely. for the tree inventory? Yeah. Thank you. So of the caliper inches um, that are being removed, the total um, the total caliper inches is 777 inches. Um, that requires 389 inches of tree replacement, so it's essentially half of uh, the trees that are being removed. Uh, we are able to accommodate uh, 115 inches of, of tree caliper with the new planting plan in, in the areas that we're planting, and so there's uh, 274 inches of, of additional mitigation that's required um, that would be in payment in lieu of uh, planting, so that's certainly offered up as, as part of the um, as part of the project. Thank you. Yeah. Um, as you know, just a couple of other uh, things to mention um, that we are um, we are providing a, uh, a new accessible sidewalk connection along the northern edge of View Avenue to connect to North Street. Um, this will be a, a paved sidewalk um, to provide you know, fully accessible access out to the public way. We are also, um, we are also um, improving or enhancing. Um, there's an existing trail that um, it's, uh, sort of winds through. Uh, I'll show you a better. So you can see evidence of it here that winds sort of across the backyards of all these properties. Um, through these, through, through the existing wetlands and sort of the drier areas and exits in a couple of locations. There's a very prominent um, connection to the bike path um, through what was formerly a, a sort of a homeless encampment in this area, um, but there's a real obvious connection to the bike path there. There's also a connection that, that winds up and around, connects to the end of, uh, the western end of, of Northern Ave before it crosses um, this drainage ditch and then the bike path again. So um, as part of this, we are proposing to relocate and enhance that trail um, to you know, relocate it to this property where possible um, and then improve it to the extent that it's in a, it would be established gravel path. There are some elevated portions of boardwalk that we are providing to get through the BBW portions um, in consultation with the Conservation Commission. Um, so all of that is, you know, we're, we're really trying to make that connection and that existing trail system, um, you know, part of this project and integrated into the, um, some of the, the pedestrian connections that uh, exist now and, and into the future. Um, what else? This does, um, just comment that this does, this project does fit, um, some of the goals of the Sustainable Northampton Comprehensive Plan, particularly Goal H1, which speaks to providing affordable high-density housing for mixed, uh, for mixed incomes um, with small energy efficient homes, and this certainly achieves all of those, um, all of those goals. Um, and then I think finally I would just speak to traffic before um, presenting some of the architectural drawings. Um, <coughs> As required, we did provide a traffic uh, traffic uh, mitigation summary, and essentially the um, you know the the summary is that there is one existing single-family home uh, that exists there now that would be accounted for. There are uh, a, a twelve new ones that would replace that, so there are eleven uh, additional single-family units which would generate um, a, 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 an additional 11 vehicle trips during the peak hour. 
And so that's the mitigation um, payment that's that's offered up as, as part of the mitigation required for, for the traffic increase. Um, it's, you know, it, it, these, this isn't high, um, high density uh, housing necessarily. These aren't apartments. These are, you know, small single family, um, single family units. Um, and I will try to run through some of these architectural slides and images um, as best I can. and. Um, if Charles wants to chime in uh, at any point, uh, please interrupt me and let, let him go. But um, as I mentioned, we, we approached this project, um, you know, in, in, a, in a way that really tried to focus and enhance um, the, the resource areas on the sites and the open space, being cognizant of, um, you know, the adjacent residential um, homes and, and properties and um, you know, not, not overdevelop this, this property as some of the previous projects that the board has, has maybe seen in the, in the past. Um, so these are all, um, again, small efficiency units. Um, largest is about 1,300 square feet. Um, that's these three larger ones here, which um, you know, are, are larger really due to their um, carport that is below the first floor or the upper floor. And then there's some, um, you know, additional, um, you know, living space on the on the upper level. Um, hey, Jeff, I'm sorry to ask you an architectural question, but mm -hmm. what, what are those wood slats on the larger units on the roof? Does it make sense? That I think these are these are the spaces above the uh, carports, which are more intended to be uh, three season rooms. So I would imagine that's probably some slatted. Um, Opening in the ceiling to provide some light, some additional ventilation in that space. They're not meant to be, you know. I don't think it's a, a necessarily fully conditioned space. Um, would be my guess. Okay, but we'll that's let Charles chat. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So I mean, just to clarify, three, like there's three unit types: 800 square feet, three 1,200 square foot with carports. Two bedrooms, two and a half bedrooms at the car the carport units, um, and they're all, all electric flat roofs, um, universal heat exposure, um, and these to the side of the backyard spaces. So, question: it, I mean, this is a when you're cutting down all the trees that they're going to be cutting down. Mm -hmm. I, are you? How do, how do these have solar and they be so close to your home? How, I'm sorry. Uh, so this is the, here. I mean, this is the way, okay. this is looking west. Um, so the southern exposure really is, you know, off of, off of this, this side of the, of the site. Um, yeah, I mean, there are a number of mature trees in that, in that existing wetland area that, you know, we're certainly not proposing to cut down. Um, Know, some of those may limit um, optimal solar exposure, but I, I think the intention is certainly to, you know, have have um, you know, solar capacity for any of these units. Um, you can see the small bike shelters um, in this corner, and then uh, again further back on the site. Um, again, just other uh, other views of the site um, from different directions. This one's looking to the east. Um, Again, this is, so there's two different versions of these smaller 800 square foot units, um, depending on their orientation. You can see in the site plan that some are oriented sort of a long way, um, and some are oriented, you know, horizontally with the, with the long edge of the building to the, to the sidewalk, to the open space. Primarily the difference is in the way the interior space is oriented so that in these, the narrower um, oriented units, there's you know, large glass um, windows, um, views out the back um, of the building, um, you know, offering views of that, of that wetland area, that open space. This is the second floor. Um, again, two bedrooms, um, bath in the upper floor, um, large living space, open living space in the lower floor. Um, and then the, um, the other unit, which again, same size, same general, Footprint offers um, a long, uh, long open view uh, along the long horizontal edge, so it offers some flexibility with regards to how we uh, orient the, the different uh, units on the site. 
Um, but these are all two bedroom, um, one bath, um, and yet yeah, less than 800 square feet. These are the larger, um, larger units. You can see on this ground floor, there's, um, this is the single uh, carport area, upper level, um, which you can see, let's see, over, over here where the carport is. Um, the upper level is, is got this sort of covered deck area um, at upper level um, with direct access from that second story um, offering you know, that, that additional amenity. There's a little bit of additional storage space on that ground floor um, as well. So that's, that's one of the benefits of those larger units, but there's, there's three of them <coughs> in general. Um, and these are just some images of um, the bike shed. These show you know, much more than four um, bike um, uh, bike racks. There's certainly capacity <coughs> for these at a minimum. Like I said, very comfortably we can fit you know 16, 18 bikes um, in, in these. Um, but these are um, you know modest, um, you know sheltered, um, covered areas for for bike storage and uh, bike pumps, that types of thing. And then these are just a series of images um, walking through the site, and then there's a little video um, that um, that Kimo put together that I think is a good. Um, a good introduction to the site as well. So just looking, these are sort of in the south uh, western corner. Um, looking back, the resource areas, the wetlands are behind all of these units. The south part of the property um, is off to the right here. Um, coming around, you can see one of the uh, bike shelters here as you enter. These are one of the units as you come into the site. View Ave is off to the right. Um, road branches off to the north. Um, and then to the south here, um, to the bottom of the page, um, just sort of the back of the units. Again, we don't anticipate there's going to be much yuck on the wetlands, but the idea that these all face up against, um, you know, that, that bordering vegetated wetland and um, you know, really enhance that open space. Um, quick question. So, and what do we see there? Kind of a wooden patio? Is there this area here? established patios? So these, I, uh, this is what was shown in the um, in this these renderings. There, the site plans don't include that space, so we're not proposing. There's wooden patios or concrete patios outside. Um, these, you know, these. If you look at the site plan, the the slope does drop off, you know, fairly, you know, quickly behind these units. So it's really a space that if somebody wants to put a chair or a lawn chair, they could they could put one. Um, They're actually not in the the patio spaces. No, that's what I'm saying. They, like the renderings that we have like, don't show those. Oh, interesting. Okay, so this may have been just yeah. updated. Or the updated. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, the intent is that that will just you know bleed off into the into the natural landscape there. Um, and then again, just back of the back of the um, back of the units here, and I'll just share this. Through video of the site, which I think um, just sort of gives a nice uh, overview of um, of the general character that we're we're hoping to accomplish. Again, this is looking south into that that southerly parking lot. Um, wetlands are to the right, and now behind these these units, you can see the upper decks of the carports. North around that larger loop. Um, you know, primarily these these smaller units oriented, you know, the long way and, and uh, on a narrow access to provide some some um, diversity. And then around to the end of that upper parking lot where that um, bike shelter is. And then just from the back, again, just getting um, getting views in and through. You know, one of the one of the Big goals of this was to provide, um, you know, a lot of open views through the site, um, and so both between the buildings and then just with a lot of glass on that lower level. That as you come into the site, there are a number of units that actually you know offer views, you know, completely through and 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 to those um, uh, wetland areas in the back. So trying to make this site as sort of transparent as possible 
um, and not present a, a, a wall of structure along that edge. So, um, with that, I will open it up here. Can I ask a question? Um, so, we'll hold on just for a little bit. We'll open up public comment in a few minutes, okay? And then you can ask questions to the board. Thanks. Um, can I, Jeff, did you say are you, you're scheduled for the 27th? For the I saw some, yeah, some chatter on the public portal. I didn't get a confirmation of the date, but if that, that sounds like it would be about right. Okay. Yeah. Good. That was one of my questions about input from the Conservation Commission at this point. So there hasn't been any. Yeah. Yeah. Other questions from board members? Make a general statement for the for the public's awareness. Um, we're the planning board, so we're not the conservation commission. Um, we're not really concerned with uh, the different buffer zones or anything in relation to conservation areas, right? So we're looking more about the the site layout and setbacks and open space and those sorts of things, but not the wetlands. Let our colleagues in the Conservation Commission deal with that on the 27th or whenever that hearing is scheduled. Thank you. Other questions before we open up to public comment? I can you say a little bit more about the um, pedestrian path with so the gravel and the boardwalk area, etc.? I'm guessing the well, since it's going straight through, you know, some of that those protected areas, but I didn't totally catch where it is on the site, and particularly how it's connected to the people who are living on this um, parcel. Parcels. So we did go through a number of conversations, um, both with the planning department and conservation, to try and make sure that um, whatever we were proposing would be um, approvable by both boards, both commissions, um, both in terms of just ensuring that we. Um, enhanced or, or protected that existing connection, uh, existing <coughs> connection, but also with respect to, you know, what we could and can't do um, in the wetland. There is, um, there are, there is a limited project status for um, pedestrian paths um, in resource areas, provided that there are certain width and um, certain materials. And so that's what we work with um, the conservation department on just to make sure that what we were proposing would be um, approvable under their regulations. So most of this, um, you know, a lot of this is sort of an old former roadbed in, in many sorts. So it's, it's um, you know, vegetation is closing in, but there is a, a, a pretty clearly defined, you know, pedestrian path. Um, we're really, you know, we will do some vegetation pruning where, where necessary to make sure that that's, you know, that, that pathway is, is open and clear and, and, you know, safe for pedestrian travel where it crosses over, um, it does meander, you know, back and forth across some of these rear property lines. So where possible, we've taken it, um, you know, within this property itself and relocated it and reconnected it back up to its existing um, um, uh, alignment um, to make sure that, you know, it's, it's all on this property and will be maintained by, you know, this, um, this entity. Um, and then, um, yeah, where where it does extend through um, some wetter portions of that DVW during the wet season, we propose an elevated boardwalk um, that, again, just is in compliance with that limited project status uh, under the wetland regulation. So all of that will be, um, yeah, we, we're, so the two things that is we're, we're improving it and enhancing it um, as much as possible to be able to ensure that that's connection will remain and then we are relocating it where possible to, to have all of that trail system be within this property so they have control and, and um, responsibility over that. Mm -hmm. uh, and so is there, uh, when we were out on a site visit, it looked like there is a sort of informal path going from sort of the front of the shed over to that portion mm -hmm. of the lot where the pathway is. Are right. you formalizing that connection as well? So people on this who are living in these homes would be able to access it right from yes. that corner? 
So, so I probably can't see too well here, but yes, off this, off this bike shelter in the corner, this is where the trail is now, just just off the edge of the northern edge of the page. Um, so there is a path connection that's shown in the plans that you know connects up here into that directly into that that trail. Thank you. Yeah. That plan set was updated yesterday or the day before. So previously. Okay. Um, so just in terms of process, I want to be kind of clear. Um, we're still awaiting a uh, stormwater report and some comment from the DPW. Right. So the plans were submitted today to DPW, so they're just giving that time to review them. Um, so that's for both stormwater and the other comments that we have to make about utilities and so forth. So um, because of the stormwater ordinance, in order to hear the, you know, to make sure that stormwater permit gets issued. And then all of those then can be, you know, addressed um, when the stormwater permit has been issued. So in terms of public comment, we can also take public comment because um, there's quite a crowd here and also on Zoom. And we'll, we'll list out the comments that are made. Um, some of them we may address tonight, the applicant may address, others we won't. Um, but it'll be very important that we don't go through those same comments two weeks from now when we continue the hearing. So if folks are, are mindful of that. Um, okay. And I would just say it's not necessarily gonna be two weeks um, ah, because okay. in two weeks your agenda's pretty full. Thank you. Okay, um, and Carolyn, help me a little bit. I've been around for a long time, but I'm forgetful. Uh, why is this not a subdivision? Um, so a subdivision is the creation of a street that creates frontage. So, um, and all the street infrastructure that goes with it. So this is already, a, this is a private way essentially, it's not a public street. So the frontage, frontage for this parcel is actually that piece that connects the North Street. So View Avenue is just avenue in name, it's not a street. Um, and all the units are on a single parcel so it's not subdivided into lots along a street. Thank you. And there was, I thought there was some uh, legal, legal background with this street, pre with this access previously. What has changed? Um, so the legal access was actually related to um, a paper street that was never built on the north side, so right where Jeff is um, aligning. So oh. previously when the project came before the planning board and was approved, it had many more units pushed closer into the wetland, but also took advantage of a paper street, which um, where um, Jeff is um, putting his cursor, and that's <coughs> what was um, determined to be not um, allowed usage for this property owner to access the property. So that's the difference, it's just okay. a single access. Thank you for the clarification. And now the applicant owns New Street, it's a private road, and it's like a long driveway into this one lot. Right. And uh, that's the way it always was. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. So that hasn't changed. There's shared access to oh, other yeah. houses also. For other houses. Right, so you know, it'd be, I don't know what the deeds references say, but um, assumption is that there is um, something in the deed that allows this kind of easement essentially for those other units to right. cross this property in order to get to their property. Okay. And with the conversations you've been having about this trail system, is there an associated easement for that for the public use? Or are we just relying on the applicant's goodwill to allow, to allow people to keep using that? Um, yeah, so the, the, you all can't require the applicant to provide public access unless they were offering it for um, you know, traffic mitigation purposes or something like that. Um, so it would be, so the idea though is they need to provide a connection <coughs> from this project 
to the Northern, Northern Avenue, but that's really for the use of the um, future property owners or users of the property. Um, and it's up to the applicant to determine whether that's available for the general public. Okay. Other general or specific questions from the board before we open it up? Well, I guess if we're asking questions, my only one is on the photometric plan. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering if we could just zoom in on some of the areas by the property lines. I didn't, I'll admit, I didn't take a great look at this. Um, right, so I mean, there's a little bit of spillover the property line. Yeah, you do, I mean, keep in mind, we do have a fence along this edge. Oh, okay. Um, but that's, yeah, that's, I think that's the closest. And then there's one other right north, right? These are all close. Yeah. Um, yeah, right there. So a little spillover. And this is a point two, like that west of the property line there. Yeah. Um, and then the only other comment, because everyone knows how much I love our new lighting ordinance. Um, I noticed that these light fixtures are uh, 3,000 Kelvin temperature. Sure that we require 2700 Kelvin. Um, the we can certainly yeah, spec that as I know it. I, I will say it has, it has been uh, it has been a challenge. I believe you, <laughs> David and I. Believe you. It has been an extreme <laughs> challenge I trying to find somebody. So, but no one listens. Yeah, we, we are bending the industry. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's it's City not so much it's not so much bending the interest the industry as it is finding um, either a products and um, and lighting that even fits those categories, but then get um, even getting the photometrics on and nobody, you know, for liability reasons will do that. So it's, okay. it's been a thank you for reading that when you base your lighting ordinance on the astronomer's recommendation. <laughs> Duly noted. Duly noted. I'm sure the uh, applicant can come back to the planning office, the building inspector, and ask for a waiver if it's in the meeting that completion of the development is and when the development, uh, you know, approved. Um, until those are much more readily available to the construction industry. <laughs> All right. Thank you, our lighting expert. Um, we can't change an ordinance tonight. Um, so why don't we open up for public comment? And again, there's a good crowd here, many people with uh, spent some time, um, figured out how they're gonna address the board. So I would uh, suggest that you limit your comments to two minutes. Um, and I will gently nudge you if you're going over that. And if you are coming up after someone else, please try not to repeat their um, comments or their topics. We're pretty smart here on the board and we can gather most of the inferences around traffic and wetlands um, and things of that nature. So we didn't ha we don't have a sign up sheet. Um, so we'll do you want me to leave this up? Just yeah. For sure. Okay. And you might need to be nearby. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And again, the comments from the public are addressed to the planning board members, and we don't respond to each comment as it is. We take the comments, we can then cluster them into patterns, and then the board addresses them after the comment period as best as we can, along with the applicant. All right, uh, we don't have a sign up list. Who's brave enough to go first here in council chambers? And if you just give us your name and address um, when you start, that would be great. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is David Fenton. I live at 164, 166 North Street, which is this. If I can get the cursor to move, I'm so technology savvy. This would be my house right here. So it abuts the View Avenue and this back portion. Uh, our concern here is that when, and I've got to say, Mr. Cerula has been very good uh, at communicating with us. He sat down with us on several occasions in my yard and uh, it's been wonderful to have that kind of that dialogue going about how this was all developing. Things have changed as a, as a result of our input, and we truly appreciate that. Initially, he had a common area for uh, the 
residence there, which was going to be down here. But apparently it fell within a 200 uh, foot area of the river, which I don't know if you've all been out there. It's just a little culvert that kind of oozes um, more times than not. It's more, it's heavier down the other end. So they had to be moved. That has now been moved up to right in this area. Um, and you and I are closer than where this is gonna be from my backyard. That's my concern. Um, I mean, I, you, you can dumb it down a little bit, say, you know, there's, a, there's 12 houses, there's gonna be 12 cars. Well, everyone has two cars. So there's gonna be a lot more traffic. And to have a common area, I guess it's a policy or, or a zoning thing that this has to be in place. And I, I question that because in some instances that may be applicable, that may be needed, but in this location in Ward 3, downtown Northampton, basically, you are with that ramp, you're 30 seconds from the from the bike path, uh, but by bike you're right now either a minute or a minute and a half by bike to Bates Street or the Woodmont Road connection. Um, and as far as open space, you have Lampard Park, which is about a five minute walk, and you have the very spacious Sheldon Field, which is five minutes from there. So my question is, why does it need to be there? Again, the property is gonna be from here to you away. Um, do we need 12 houses congregating there, having a party there, um, having a fire pit there, that close to our backyard, it's right there. Um, if you came out, you would know that. Uh, you, would, you could see that personally, it, it is very, very close. Um, so I would like to see if that could be moved somewhere or maybe uh, 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 permission to not have something like that in this particular case. Um, and this is the first time we've heard about the sidewalk. We knew it was gonna be a berm or a, or a curb along View Avenue. Uh, this is the first we've heard of a sidewalk. We'll just, um, but we'll talk to Mr. Sewell about that. But we, we do appreciate your time. And, um, and I guess the other thing was the culverts, the drainage ditches. I, I kind of forget where those are gonna be. I, I kind of thought they were up, maybe one here and another one down here somewhere. But again, that's something we can address with them. Great. Thank you very much for your time. I truly appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. Staying here at Council Chambers for public comment. Please. Hi, good evening. My name is Jane Myers. I live in Florence, and I've been learning about this proposed project through the files in the city and from residents who are friends of mine on Road Street. It's clear to me that the significant trees, I know that you said that you don't deal with wetlands, but it directly affects the site land that you heard about in great detail. I wanted to talk a bit about it and what the Cons County just made the decision to. It's clear to me that the significant trees and wetlands mean a lot to the people who live in this neighborhood. They appreciate the flood control, heat mitigation that the woods and wetlands provide. The neighborhood also understands how excessively high the water table is at 8 View Avenue. Upon reading the plans and documents, it's amazing to me that the city would allow 29 out of 35 Norway spruce trees to be cut down. That's the number, 29. That's 80% of the trees. And uh, uh, differently from what was said by the presenter before, the USDA says that a lifespan is more likely 200 years plus. Some in optimal circumstances up to 300 years. The city would also be allowing within um, 35 feet of the bordering vegetated wetlands near Milliard Brook. These woods and wetlands purify the city's air and groundwater. They provide shade that's 15 degrees cooler than the temperature of downtown Northampton. And each of the 35 significant trees, which range in diameter from 20 to 47 inches, absorb up to 150 gallons of water per tree per day. So without those trees, that water is gonna be even a greater issue. The developers are proposing to add 83% more impervious space, uh, area, surface area to the site. Without the trees and wetlands to mitigate heavy rainstorms and severe stormwater runoff, the homes to be constructed with slab on grade foundations will be vulnerable to flood risk. Tropical storm Floyd covered the highest points of the parcel in 1999, upland of where the homes are to be built. Because the homes are built so low to the ground, they are more susceptible to flooding than homes with regular foundations and full basement. I believe these woods and wetlands should be purchased and permanently 
protected by the city of Northampton. The residents of this neighborhood deserve protection from climate change, just like any other neighborhood in the city. And I just have two questions you can consider. Could you please confirm what the current open space is on the plans? And would you clarify how far above grade the first floors of the homes are? Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Uh, anyone else? <coughs> Todd Silver, <coughs> Cyber Builders, I'm the applicant. So just wanted to say that we looked at a number of different options for this property, and most of which had higher density. And <coughs> likely, you know, were definitely greater profitability. So I think it's oftentimes <coughs> misconstrued that a developer is driven solely by profit. These are standalone units that are of modern design, and so minimalist or modern is much more expensive. So anytime you're building individual units and not grouping units in a single building, it's more expensive. So we really carefully looked at and wanted to do something different and something forward thinking, something interesting for, for, for the city and in the process, try to preserve the land and, and be mindful of, of the you know, natural characteristics of the area. Obviously, it's, a, it's desirable in that it hopes to minimize vehicle traffic and to you know promote people going to work or shopping, walking or bicycle, using a bicycle, bike trail is right there. So it's, it's important, I think, to note that it's really not driven by profit. This, this is, this is, these are uh, highly energy efficient, very different design, modern design. And it's, and so there's many, many ways to have done this uh, for more profit. So I really was interested in doing something interesting and different. And hopefully it'll have some, it'll be in demand, but that's yet to be seen because they're so small. Um, you know, how many people want to own and live in an 800 square foot house? I guess that's yet to be seen. The infrastructure cost is very high here to, to work on the site. So and the driver is really to do something that works well for the city that, that, that creates housing, but also is attractive and appealing and works with the, the habitat, the nature. Thank you. Thank you. Sovereign's project. Uh, name and address, uh, Page Bridges, 12 Northern Avenue. Almost and a butter. Uh, Sovereign's project represents precisely what urban areas need to not be doing. We need to protect woods in this age of climate. 2023, 20, this past year, has been determined to be the hottest year ever. We can expect this to continue. That woods cools our neighborhood. It is I who brought my thermometer downtown, measured 100 degrees under the Silverscape Designs um, thing, and then took it to the woods. It was 85 degrees. This is so incredibly valuable to the city of Northampton. I charge you, planning board members, Carolyn, all of you, to save this woods and to prevent all of this impervious surface, the cutting of trees, and then the paving. It's extraordinary, and we need to keep that cooling. The, we need that buffer between King Street and North Street. We need you to be responsible members of the community and say no to this project. Thank you. would like to speak if not we'll move over to the folks on zoom i think there's a question about whether there's an opportunity once the, the conservation committee is coming forward will there be another opportunity to speak then or no 
Yeah, again, to process if the meeting is, the meeting will be continued tonight and there will be, we will not close the public comment period, I don't think. So there will be another opportunity for the public to come forward and speak. We'll just try to mm -hmm. kind of hone in on those comments. I do have a question. So I, yeah, please come up and okay. ask your question. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a comment. Yeah. You don't have, I was asked a question. Um, yep. My name is Rosalind Torrey and I live on Northern Avenue. And I was just curious if this project continue. I don't know if it includes the parcel on Northern or if it's just view as its own. I know that there's another lot that's on Northern. Just wanted to know how they relate to each other. If, if I understand the applicant's presentation, there's one lot that's gonna be peeled off and um, listed as an A&R lot, um, and that's probably the one that you're um, detailing, is that correct? Yes, in fact, that's the A&R on the agenda for um, later, is that parcel on Northern. And just explain what A&R means. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, anyone who owns property along an existing street that um, has frontage that meets the minimum frontage requirement in the zoning district um, and the lot size could come before the planning board to essentially carve out a, a separate building lot and it comes to the planning board and the planning board looks at it and determines that there's no additional frontage that's required to be built in order to create that parcel. So that's why it's called, uh, it's subdivision approval not required in order to create a separate building lot along frontage. So um, that is the process by which the applicant is uh, going to create that separate building lot at the end of Northern. Does that link here? The back of it, it's not connected to this project, but it is, it abuts the project. And the path, the pedestrian path goes around that parcel. Yeah. Thank you. Any other comments? Just one question, please. Uh, come on, last one from you. <laughs> Mischievous. Um, people are, are sending in questions to you via, via computer? Correct. Is that accessible to us since it's a public hearing? Well, we'll how do we get read, access? We'll read them out loud. Oh, okay. They come in. Okay. They say no more. Great. Thank you. Great. Okay. So, so at this point, we'll move over to uh, the participants on Zoom. Um, Carolyn, actually, I don't see any at this point, but maybe something there, there about are. mine. Carolyn, the first one was about how do these new proposed buildings um, align with the existing architecture of the neighborhood? Is that the way you I want think to that do was that? the intention, but okay. it just said how do these designs conform to existing architecture? Okay, yeah. and the second yeah. one, the second one's about high water table. Mm -hmm. Comments offered from the public. Okay, and there's one hand raised from uh, uh, Jacqueline's iPhone. Um, I believe this is the um, resident who are going to offer time to speak verbally because of an accommodation. Um, so, do we need to unmute Jacqueline? Did, did we have a letter from this person? Was yes. That a yes. No, I believe there is a letter from this person also in the public file. There's a number of letters from abutters in the public file that the board um, has looked at prior to the meeting. So that's a very good question. We can't not have her speak because she offered no, that, a letter. That's but, fine. I yeah. just wanted to make it clear that um, we have read the letters yep. that you've submitted. So those are also acknowledged. Great. Great. Um, and then 
So the request was for um, a reasonable accommodation. Um, and so the response was, um, you know, even though the reasonable accommodation is met through chat, um, um, George um, had um, asked me to send a message back to Jackie that, that it would be accommodated for one minute of um, oral You hear me? Yes, we hear you fine. Okay, great. Thank you for this opportunity to speak. My name is Jacqueline McCraner. I live at 124 North Street. Um, as I'm hearing, not all of the residents in the North Street neighborhood support the proposed project at 8 View Avenue. I am a 300 foot of butter and I do not support it. Our water tables are excessively high due to the presence of underground streams and springs, the Milliard Brook that flows here from the Connecticut River, and because we're at the foot of the steep side of the Round Hill Road Glacial Drumlin, which has its own underground springs and streams. I do not believe permitting the proposed project is a responsible action by the city. Building in the wetlands would strip our neighborhood of critical flood control as well as heat mitigation from the significant trees. Cutting down the significant trees would strip the city of its heat mitigation of the downtown Northampton heat island. Slab on grade foundations built in wetlands are prone to flooding, mold, mildew, cracking due to soil settlement, heat loss, and costly maintenance and repairs. It may cost less to build up front, but maintenance issues can be an expensive nightmare down the road for homeowners. Destroying the woods and wetlands behind 8 View Avenue to build 12 homes, which folks aren't even sure here, it sounds like, if people are gonna wanna live in such small homes. So to gamble with that, with slab on grade foundations, is not the answer to the housing crisis. This project, in my view, is morally reprehensible. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. Good, good points, and we heard you loud and clear. It came through very well. And we appreciate the letter that you sent to us prior to this. Um, are there any other comments from? Okay, so we'll turn it back to the board for questions at this point. We'll keep the public comment period open, but we'll turn it over to the board. And again, we're trying to raise, <coughs> raise issues for the applicants so that um, they can go away and address those if, if, if there's some serious ones that we're unclear about. I would, uh, uh, and this clearly doesn't need to be resolved now because we're going to be coming back. Um, uh, it would be great to, to look at this the plan and figure out um, where else you might be able to put the, uh, uh, the social hall or the social <laughs> it's not space. Like, it's not a hall. No <laughs> the social rock pit. Okay. <laughs> Gathering place. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, even I, I think in the past, um, I, I I respect Chris's comment about that we're not the uh, uh, conservation commission, but in the past when we looked at projects like this of many houses backed up to a conservation area, wetlands area, the planning board has talked about some way of trying to limit, and this may happen at the Conservation Commission, but limit the, uh, the human tendency to kind of improve your backyard space, create lawns, um, play areas for your children, badminton, that's whatever. So um, I just want to go on record and hoping that the Conservation Commission looks at that also, some way of creating a, some kind of bound so that five years from now, new homeowners aren't increasing their lawn into that area, if this is approved. Yeah, I'll just say they regularly um, uh, create conditions that sort of create those hard barriers um, for that type of Like a hard red line? <laughs> no, physically okay. in the ground. 
Oh, okay, got it. Good. Still down, all Is there a fence at, the, at that front? I guess you spelled the front, well, besides that back in the plan. But at that area of the common space, is there, is there a lot line fence there? Uh, no, I think it's just vegetation right now. Okay. So the only existing thing vegetation. That's what's proposed as part of the plan, right, is, is new planting. In the back of all of the parking areas. Just step up to them. Yeah. Please. Go where my friend is. Yeah. Sorry. Right here. Thank you. So you're referring to this area here? Is that what you're speaking to? Yes. Yeah. So, um, there, I mean, there's some additional, there's some plantings there now. We're proposing some additional plantings on, on this part of the, on, on this site. To help up with that. In terms of fencing, the only fence is of, uh, behind that one parking area mm -hmm. in the southern end. Right. The other parking areas, the headlights, you assume will be blocked by. Yeah, I mean, this this northern of the area is quite a distance and there's quite a bit of vegetation. This one uh, similarly is, um, you know, there's, there's a, a pretty dense cluster of trees here, not, a, not all of which are coming down. Um, so that's yeah. There's there isn't much, you know, headlight intrusion in, in other portions of the of the site. So you might want to work with the property owner to see if like a high fence there might be a solution. Along this edge. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, we could tell you to put it down in that nook that's in the 200 Riverfront zone, but the conservation commission might not right. like that. So. No, we intentionally took it out of there to avoid riverfront area impact. So, yeah, we really were trying to avoid any any jurisdictional um, resource area impact for the project. So, yeah. where's the ANR that we're going to be looking at? Can you go back uh, to this one here? That one. Yeah. Um, uh, so, after a number of meetings with the the, the abutters and talking about the fire pit area, we feel like there is a better location that that is. Uh, that we might move one of the bike storage areas, but it was, it was pretty unanimous that the, the director butters wanted to see it moved from the location that David is concerned about. And so um, we're open to that, to finding a, an alternative to that. And I feel like it's, it's a good idea and it's very possible. I own a property on Northern and, I, and we talked about, and it's larger than necessary for zoning we talked about carving out re reconfiguring that lot so that it might move there as well but i think there are some alternatives that would uh, be more agreeable to the abutters and, and <coughs> good alternatives the common area could be within the setback there's nothing built in there it's just a gravel right. area yeah. and maybe shifting it so it's the, the abutters garage is between the common space and the house it, it right. is that's a garage David said, if you if you if you view the site, it, it seems pretty close. Although there is a buffer of his garage and, and his house, and with some plantings, I think it might be less uh, disturbing than it is on the plan. But I think we should look at and you know consider some other options as well. And we you know we spent quite quite a bit of time meeting with the neighbors and, and really want to work with them and. and make sure everybody um, has input and that we listen and try to try to work with it as much as possible. We're, so, big, we're big fans of covered bike areas though, so don't lose I'm that. I'm not okay. saying eliminate. Right. I, I think David would be okay with a yep. covered bike area as long as it's not an area to congregate. Very good. So that might be something we see on a revised plan at the next year. a question about the sidewalk, right? Sidewalk material? Yes, so that requirement, uh, it needs to be cement concrete, not bituminous. Yeah. And so how how far into the site does that need to be? I mean, this whole thing, this isn't a street. I mean, 
this is part of the, the parcel. So I just, I don't quite understand. I mean, we don't require people to have concrete walks in their, to their house, right? I would suggest that it go to that crosswalk. I mean, or if it's, I mean, basically the, the zoning says, um, essentially the, the pieces of the project that act and function like a street, you need to build the infrastructure and the sidewalks and activity in compliance with our street standard. So that view avenue, even though it's on a street, it's acting like that for this cross project. So, you know, pulling it into where the T is, um, for the rest, I think that would be appropriate. If it makes sense to go up and around to the crosswalk, that might make sense, and then the rest of it could be the T line. So that that will essentially narrow View Avenue. It will a little bit. Is is uh, is View Avenue paved to the edges of the to the edges of the city's easement to the property line? The right way. It's, it's not a right of way, but it's a property line. Right? Yes, it was paved by the city. Okay. I mean, the site plan shows that it looks like there's some, a couple feet, not quite five feet. Right. That's right. so what I'm saying. saying that, yeah. It's grass pretty much paved over. Good. Um, the concerns about high water table um, and the, the culverts and stormwater retention um, will be addressed more or less and be evaluated by the city engineer. Right, they have, they have evaluated that. You'll see comments about it, but the infiltration system, for example, the standard is it has to be two feet above high groundwater. I mean, the reason why they're building on a flag is because the groundwater is high. It varies from a foot and a half to three feet something um, above um, seasonal, seasonal high groundwater. So um, <clears throat> the point is that, you know, they're not putting Looking at that grading plan, it seems like <coughs> you're building it up quite a bit above existing grade. It's in the back portion of the site, yes. In the, in the western portion, yes. Yeah, so so there, it's, like it's essentially taking the six feet or something. The four, yeah, it varies. Yeah. Um, yeah, we heard, you know, certainly quite a few comments about the loss of trees in relationship to the establishment of new housing. Um, you provided us with a, uh, you or the applicant provided us with some charts, some kind of evaluation of, I think, trees in terms of the carbon yeah. loss. Um, could you talk about that a little bit for us? Sure. So we, over the last um, six months or so, um, with our office contracted with um, a consultants to do, um, set, sort of create a tool for us to look at carbon impacts of different um, um, various um, projects and outcomes and locations. So this calculator essentially looks, you can put the input in and sort of what the existing conditions are, um, where the project is located and what the um, typical vehicle miles traveled are for each geographic area of the city. So that has a carbon impact. So basically looking at transportation impacts, building impacts, trees, existing buildings versus proposed. And so um, we ran numbers of this project in this location versus this number of units in a similar project further out in a different location. And the impacts were much higher building in sort of new pristine area out, let's say Ryan Road or Florence Road or something like that. Um, so again, we know that there's a huge demand for housing um, and that, you know, we are, that's part of the issue is related to this um, um, climate change that affects people who are at the lower end of our economic spectrum more than others. And so, um, you know, about looking at that evaluation both in the short term and also the long term, I think is important. Um, the zoning ordinance does not say not to remove trees, but in fact, we go beyond most other cities in the Commonwealth and require replacement based on the calculation for, the, for that tree removal. And of course, it's not all the trees on the site, it's in, and there are no trees, you know, between the, at the 35 foot buffer. Um, so, um, um, so that was sort of the 
quick look at that. Um, and so, um, you know, we think that certainly from the sustainable Northampton plan, the, um, the building, the building um, the standards for these new buildings are highly efficient in addressing um, units that are, you know, accessible, more accessible to people um, because of the size, simply because of the size of the course of the access to the bike path. That was one other comment we heard was the open space calculation. I mean, I would have to think we're like over ninety percent or something. Open space, yeah, it's we're less than ten percent, I think, or you know, twelve percent with impervious area on the overall all property. So like eighty-eight percent open space. Open space, right? Right. Yep. Yep. And the other comment we heard was, does this style of housing fit in with the existing architecture? Well. It does not mirror the existing architecture, which is, you know, early 1900, most of it uh, single family homes, um, but it's certainly something different, something innovative in this person's perspective. So um, whether or not it fits into the, the, the uh, architecture of that neighborhood around North Street and the cemetery, um, I don't think that really comes into our consideration um, at this point. It is a set apart also in many ways. I appreciate the uh, the developer trying to do something different, trying to do something smaller and uh, uh, perhaps taking a gamble, perhaps not. We'll see if this project is approved. Um, and just sort of on that note, you know, this neighborhood is, uh, as you know, along with many other neighborhoods, has sort of an eclectic mix of architectural styles and the zoning does not pick or dictate architectural styles. It's really more about scale. Um, it's more than architectural styles. There were there's one other comment that came in. If you're done, what, sure. once you're done talking, on I just didn't want to forget on chat. Great. Go ahead. Okay. Um, <clears throat> David from 125 North Street. Um, just made a comment, several new developments in downtown Northampton have homes that have been on the market for several years that have yet to sell. For example, Bridge Street, Pomeroy Terrace, and condos on Pauley Street. Meanwhile, we have a lack of affordable housing and a climate crisis on our hands. What will be the plan if these homes do not sell? Great. Good. Good. Drop the price. <laughs> 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 Thank you, David. I think that does raise, I think in the application, the application speaks to 1.8% uh, or, or, or some of the units being in an affordable range. Is that true? I think it was. Um, I don't recall that specifically, but certainly with the smaller scale units, the, you know, the, the target market is for something, you know, lower than, you know, what an average you know, 1,800, 2,000 square foot single family home would go for, that this is, you know, offering something unique to the market that, um, you know, hopefully there's there's a demand for. It seems okay. like there's certainly some appeal in other towns, so. For sure, I'll, I'll, I'll look again though. I thought sure. in the application there was something, a percentage of the 12 units would be uh, affordable and it came out to 1.8%. There's a, there's a requirement in the zoning that um, a percentage of the units either be affordable or be less than 12, 1,200 square feet. So I think the number is nine of those units are under 1,200 okay. square feet, and three of them are the three larger ones that were discussed. So I think that was, and that's, the zoning requires that, but it's either ors. And so mm -hmm. given that these are, you know, yeah. around 900 square feet, by their very nature, Should we make a motion to continue the hearing at this point, or can I give the audience one last bite at the apple? Everybody okay till we come back again? Okay, we have one last comment here. I appreciate the concern about housing. Let's talk about Airbnb. Most of many, many houses along North Street throughout this neighborhood we have been talking about 
are now Airbnb. People have come from outside, bought houses, built their own house out back, and then rented out the front house in Airbnb. Other people, many, many people throughout North Street area are doing Airbnb. If we want housing, let's have the conversation about Airbnb and empty dwellings. There are houses that have been empty for years. We need to deal with this and we need to, these are places where people used to live. One of these houses that's been empty for the last few years, these people own it and they come, every time they come to town, like once a year or something, they stay there, this wealthy couple. And I, I said to the next door neighbor, don't you wonder how many people lived there 50 years ago? She said, I happen to know, I lived here. There were 11 people and she named them, you know, this extended family. So we went from 11 people living in this house down to zero. The Bridges, Northern Avenue. That's right. Okay. Please come on up to the podium. Uh, well, I did want to stay. Uh, my name is Dennis Helms, 174, 176. I just have a question. Uh, Dennis Helms, 174, 176 North Street. I just want to make sure since the hearing is still being continued, this I want to think more about what I want to say and how I want to say it. So I just want to make sure that A, I can email you my comments, and B, when you next meet, not in two weeks, evidently, um, I can right. still speak at that time. Correct. If that's correct. Correct. Okay. And you will be able to speak again. Okay. And it'll be posted in a, in a legal way. Today is say. not now, speak your peace or, or forever hold your peace. No. Speak now or forever hold your peace. No. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it will, will it be posted? I think the yeah. agenda. Right. Yeah. It'll be on the agenda. But they don't resend postcards, but right. it'll you be won't get posted. a new notification. This mm -hmm. hearing is your notification. No, but there's a legal hearing. notice posted at City Hall, wherever Carol right. does the about the agenda. Right. The agenda. Right. But no, there won't be postcards. Yeah. And we will set the date and time of the right continuation now. Right, right now. now. Okay. So you can write it down and send it on okay. yourself. So this is going to be based on the do the poll, right? It's all answered. During the summer, the planning board often goes down to one meeting a month rather than. Answer. Yeah, tell me what are the dates again? Rather than two meetings a month. So um, the most people could attend was July 25th. August 22nd. August 22nd. And then, so um, those are the four Thursdays of the month. So the next meeting would be July 25th. Sam, can you make that one? Mm -hmm. um, because our next meeting, June 27th, is right. our full agenda. Right. But then our next one is going to be once, just once in July. move to continue the hearing at 8th View Avenue to some time that Carolyn will tell us on July 25th. <laughs> I mean, you can do 7 o'clock because we don't have anything yet. Is that the right agenda? 7 o'clock on July 25th. I second. Great. Any discussion? All right. All in favor of moving it to July 25th. Okay. 7 o'clock. All right. Unanimous. Thank you, folks, for coming.